Hello Jerks, and welcome to this week's Beer of the Week uh, video. I'm getting this all out of order, so I'm probably out the beer first. <laughs> For some uh, reason, I'm out of practice. Yeah, yeah, you don't come around here much these days. I don't. He's Luke. And he's Matt. And, and this week, we're drinking... Uh, we're drinking First Light from Waitoa Brewing uh, down in Wellington. Uh, now, Waitoa is uh, a relatively new brewery. They've only been around for a couple of years, but they've expanded pretty fast. They started out with a little uh, neighborhood brew pub in Hataitai, uh, which is a suburb just uh, on the back side of Mount Victoria there. But they've also recently opened a, another venue um, in the center of the city. I think I've only been to the original brew pub because it's just around the corner from my parents' house. And you've only been to the one in the city, is that right? Yeah, I haven't been to the brewery. Uh, but the, yeah, the one in the city is a really cool little spot, just a really nice, um, like modern, clean aesthetic. And it's, uh, yeah, just pretty central. I can't remember what street it's on, Victoria maybe. Uh, but yeah, in the middle of Wellington and a really nice place to visit. Yeah, and the other one's just a nice little suburban brew pub. They've got the, a small brewery built into the um, built in there on, on a platform. Uh, little uh, little tap room, so you can get some takeaways there as well. Um, only a few seats, but um, yeah, it's in a good spot. And Hatai is a beautiful little suburb as well. And they've been putting out some cracking beers. Yeah, they really have. Oh, cheers. cheers. It smells good, hey? Yeah. Such a great aroma on it. Just opening it up, it's just like a... Oh, it's like a kind of fruit or something. Yeah. So I'm not sure there's much we have to say about hazy IPAs that you won't already know, but we're going to say it anyway. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, um, a hazy IPA um, brewed with a lower bitterness and really uh, huge amounts of uh, whirlpool and late hop additions, big dry hop. Um, it's dry hop during fermentation where the hops uh, interact with the yeast and biotransform to give you that lasting haze mm. um, and that kind of thick cloudiness to it there. Um, and First Light is um, a, a hazy IPA that is brewed with all New Zealand hops. So um, often we see uh, more American hops uh, coming through, but, um, but we do see a bunch of uh, Kiwi interpretations as well. This one uses, what is it, Kohatu, Nectaron, Rewaka, and Motueka. Mm. Um, so it's got um, kind of a bit more uh, citrus than tropical uh, compared to a lot of the American interpretations that we see. Yeah. Um, it's. It's um, a really great example of a hazy IPA, and obviously hazy IPAs are the the most popular thing. Hazy pale ales and hazy IPAs, and there's just so many out there. But not all of them are great, or like anything in this world. Uh, but White Terror have been doing a really, really good job at this style, and there's um, I think there's a few breweries around that just really have a reputation for doing fantastic hazy beers. Uh, and Waitoa recently won the trophy for um, the best, I think they call it the Hazy Juicy, Hazy Juicy category, haven't they? The Blues yeah. Guild Awards. Yeah. So that's for a, a different beer in this series, but it was the uh, inaugural um, uh, category the Brewers Guild have done because hazes are still a relatively new style and often it takes these competitions a little while to catch up with sort of new trends and new styles. And yes. also, I think with the competitions, style, style guidelines take a while to catch up. So stuff like uh, New Zealand Pilsner and stuff have just been added to the international style guidelines, yep. which has been around for a long time. So um, yeah, it does take a take a bit. I think also it's good often that it takes a few years for the style guidelines to catch up because a lot of beer styles don't last more than a year or two. Yeah, we don't, we're not seeing um, what is it, uh, brute IPA? Yeah, yeah, there's still. not a brute IPA category. Don't know if cold IPA or. Uh, dip hop IPA will make it in there in the future. I doubt it. They're kind of more te sub sub styles and technique driven um, styles than something as as the hazy IPA is kind of markedly different now from a traditional IPA, um, where you, where you're expecting high bitterness and uh, clear and pine and resin and all that, which you don't really see in the hazy. Well, that's what I think. And obviously, well, we've made a, a cold IPA recently, and we've done a dip hop IPA or hop dip, as some brewers are also calling it. But it's yeah, those two. It's, it's more about what's well, for dip hopping, especially. It's it's the just a part of the process. Yeah, I don't it's, think it's, it's a style. It's a technique rather than um, necessarily something that's a style. Um, but, Back onto this one. Yeah, but um, so first light, as Luke mentioned, is uh, one of four in a series that um, uh, White have done. So that is, there's being a first light, high noon, afterglow, and twilight. Um, so there's four hazy IPAs in that series. So if you're enjoying this, make sure to um, uh, check out those uh, other options that are available mm. as well. Um, because yeah, as we said, uh, White Tower nailing out of the park and seeing those uh, different hop expressions play on a, um, a similar basis is uh, always a nice thing to see, especially if you're really getting into it and you want to know uh, how to differentiate between your hops and your regions and stuff like that. Um, being able to uh, put a series like that side by side um, 
is always a, a valuable thing if you're trying to uh, get a bit more kind of insight into what you're seeing drinking and the ingredients behind it. Yeah, and Whitetail are a really lovely bunch. Well, I say lovely bunch, I, I think it's only Tommy that I've met. And I've met James. I think I might have met Tommy as well. But they're a group of, I think there's four co-founders uh, that sort of all just work really hard to pull it together with a brew pub and then it's just steadily scaled. And it's, I think it's quickly become quite a, an institution in her tie time in Wellington. But we're only just recently starting to see a lot of their beers around the country. So as much as they get loads out in their local area, I think not many Aucklanders have really tried their beers. So it's it's great that we've been getting quite a few of their beers into beer jerk. So we can try them. And then that gets all around the rest of the country as well. And I think, yeah, as um, as I said, I think a, lo- a case for a lot of those new and local uh, breweries and brew pubs that start up is that um, it's fantastic to see there is demand in people's local areas for um, new breweries and um, for that output that they're putting out. And they don't need to um, spend a lot of money and freight getting their beer around the country when there's uh, so many thirsty people nearby um, and able, able to get it fresh direct from the source and uh, checking out that brew pub. So if you are down in Wellington, it's just the other side of the bus tunnel um, on the big crossroads in Hatido. So um, it's uh, pretty easy to get to. And People uh, probably have Google Maps. They do, but just tell people where it is as well. <laughs> <laughs> You're uh, not one of those boomers that like gives you really detailed instructions, and it's like I'm not paying any attention to this. I'm just going to type it into my phone. Uh, the pies from the bakery just down the road in the Tai are really good as well. That's the advice you don't go to Google Maps. Yeah, there you go. Uh, bloody great beer. Um, as much as I'm feeling a little bit jaded about hazies, and I've been drinking a lot of hazy beers that are not fantastic. So when we when we do come across a very good hazy beer, it's still something to get a bit excited about. Yeah. Um, great execution, really low bitterness, packed with fruity flavours, massive aroma, um, obviously from the champion hazy brewer, brewer in New Zealand, uh, you'd expect it to be good. Yeah, and um, we are going through um, a little bit of a, a patch of IPAs in the box at the moment, so um, you're going to see um, one or two more, um, so uh, an unusual little uh, period of hoppy beers for us because um, they're often underrepresented in our box the rest of the time because we deliberately try and um, uh, go for some uh, stuff that's a bit more uncommon and weird and wonderful. Um, we've got a bit of a departure next week before we're back for um, some more IPA, mm. um, but uh, expect uh, our normal programming, programming to res- resume shortly after that. Well, that definitely is a thing with our curation with the Beer Jack Beer of the Week box. We, it's about variety for us, and it's about having examples of loads of great different styles. But of course, in New Zealand and in just all of craft beer in general, IPA is king. Uh, so there are so many IPAs that we taste and that we get offered constantly to put in our subscription box. Uh, so yeah, with this curation, we, we, we thought actually screw it, we'll just put a few in because we just happen to have so many great ones within a short amount of time. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, there's going to be a few more weird, unusual and uh, less commonly seen beers coming up over the coming weeks. Yeah, um, so definitely some exciting stuff to come. Um, speaking of exciting stuff, the Fresh Hop Box is still available on the, web, on the website and um, that's open for pre-orders. Um, so we've got three different versions there. Uh, one which uh, has all 28 uh, beers that we've managed to get into our selection. The whole harvest. The whole harvest and then uh, two more, the Humulus and the Lupulus box, which are uh, 14 beer selections. Uh, those pre-orders are open now and uh, shipping uh, towards the end of April um, once, all, once the last of those beers has arrived. So um, as we discussed last week in a bit more detail, it's a really exciting box. Um, our autumn drop is available, which is um, a selection of autumnal beers uh, from uh, 12 different breweries. Um, a, a really good kind of diverse uh, range with some dark beers, some hobby beers, some sours, um, and yeah, a, a bit of a, an eclectic mix there. Um, and yeah, it's a, a really nice... Uh, and the to Auckland Beer Mile box is a good one as well. Yeah, Auckland Beer Mile box. So we've got um, yeah, a bunch from our, from our local neighbourhood with uh, Behemoth, Cowabunga, Urbanaut, uh, Garage Project and Small Gods in there. Someone else? Brothers, did you say? No, brothers. Yeah, Oops, sorry, go. brothers. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so there's a few great um, mixed cases available, mix ca- cases available on the website uh, now, and we've got another exciting one uh, in, in the works, so we'll tell you more about that in a week or two. Thank you for joining us once again. I hope you all enjoy this week's beer. Uh, we're off to the pub, and we'll see you next time. Cheers. Cheers.